Vostok 3 was launched on August 11, 1962 at 8.24 a.m. UTC from Gagarin Start at Baikonur Cosmodrome. It carried Andrian Nikolaev on a mission to make a close approach with Vostok 4 and its cosmonaut Pavel Popovich. Vostok 4 would be launched the next day at 8.02 a.m. UTC from the same launch complex. The rendezvous would not involve Nikolaev and Popovich making careful maneuvers to get close to each other. Rather, approach between the two spacecraft was handled by the launch timing and trajectory alone, and so would still leave the two spacecraft very far apart. Still, it was a demonstration of trajectory accuracy and planning not yet seen. It was also the first time two humans would be in space at the same time, and also the first time two crewed missions were in space. Vostok 3's orbit was 218 kilometers by 166, at an inclination of 65 degrees, giving it a period of 88.5 minutes while Vostok 4 was in a 211 by 159 km orbit at the same inclination with a period of 88.2 minutes. The difference meant that the two spacecraft got to a distance of 6.5 km from each other briefly, but eventually drifted further away from each other. Popovich said that he saw Vostok 3 looking to him like a small moon, and the two spacecraft were able to communicate with each other over the radio, the first such communication in space. While a long way from docking, this success meant that docking was at least feasible from a fuel standpoint since the orbits were already so close to each other that fuel necessary was minimal. The launch of two crewed missions within a day of each other was itself impressive. At the same time, Nikolaev would set a new duration record spending almost four days in space. Popovich in Vostok 4 would spend a day less since they would both return on August 15th. Vostok 4 deorbiting 7 minutes after Vostok 3, and the two missions landing 200 kilometers apart from each other. Because the two cosmonauts were in roughly the same orbit at the same time, the Soviet space program was able to get data on how their reactions differed while controlling other variables. The two cosmonauts had tasks to perform to show how well people could work in space, and the overall conclusion was positive. The United States would not be able to match the single mission duration record until Gemini 5, launched three years later, but held the duration record until Soyuz 9 in 1970, and then reclaimed it through the Skylab program between 1971 and 1978, after which the Soviet Union got it back with Salyut 6 in 1978, and the United States has not held the record for a single mission duration since. Thank you for watching this mission profile of Vostok 3 and 4.